Well, we will make many more episodes of it. That is the idea. Indeed. Uh, well, Jeremiah. I've got a little Ooh, show. perfect. We got a live experiment. We got some <laughs> real science. Well, I'm not going to run the live experiment, but I will show it off. So, I don't know if you want to full screen this, but here's the device. So, Kedium Physics built this strange device he calls the Kedium Levity device. It's an apparatus that uses an electromagnetic coil, kind of like a speaker voice coil in the center. And then it has apparently one piezo transducer that's at the bottom on the inside. And then there are some holes in the top. And he's got wires near the top and the bottom that act as ionizers that he connects to a high voltage transformer. So I designed something slightly different that I think will work better. And uh, the device, I believe, is producing gravitational waves. So this pops off, and I'll show you if I can. Very up close, you might be able to see, yeah, I can see it on the camera, these tiny little wires. These are 0.005 millimeter thick tungsten filament wires for a cathode of a uh, miniaturized amplifier tube. And so that goes underneath. I left the original 3D print first layer raft on because sound waves can still get through it. So I can drill these holes out if I want to, but at this point, I don't feel the need to because sound gets out of it plenty good. Uh, at the bottom, there's a series of seven piezo transducers, and they're all wired in parallel, and they connect to the same two-gang wire. These are speaker wires. And then the bi filer center coil is just one layer up and one layer down with two wires one side by side, so these are both the same length. And then I've got, if I want to use it, a second coil so I can assemble this with a Helmholtz array using uh, two different coils. And that will unify the magnetic field between the two. So for now, just to protect this extremely thin and delicate wire, I'm gonna place that back on the top. It just slips in place and sits there, fits tightly enough. And so ultimately what should happen is, to answer the question of what is this thing supposed to do? It should produce a gravitational wave output on the top where anything that's placed above this, aluminum plate or heat sink or piece of stone or, you know, plant material or plastics or cardboard or whatever, you know, anything you stick on top should basically be when the resonance builds up and is suddenly released, it should be repelled or flung off the top and fly off to the side. And so we're going to find out if that actually works or not in this device. But uh, this is the 3D print that we came up with. We've got the STL files and we, we thought about whether or not we want to do something like kits or just simply release these out. Like for our, for our team members, they're just going to get the STL files and start printing these things themselves and try a, a few uh, iterations to see if they work and to try and understand how the effect is actually produced. But that's what I've got going on for now. Uh, and hopefully this gravitational wave generator will produce gravitational waves and, and many people will easily be able to replicate this and 3D print these parts. That's what it's <laughs> That's all about. Impressive. Wow. You can see the coil itself actually slides up and down. So like this whole this whole system is adjustable and on the surface there are actually these series of rings that allow you to adjust it and make it uh, level or parallel. So it's all pretty nice. Of Simon and I thing to come. Simon C and I designed this thing together and he does pretty darn good work, so oh, I was pretty happy. I mean, it printed nicely. That's so. awesome. I have been uh, harassing Simon C that uh, we need to start a 3D printing real science uh, episode and series and get on that. And, well, that would be the perfect pilot project for it. Uh, what you're doing right there, Jeremiah, that's epic and awesome. And... It's exactly what needs to be done is it's real science and it's open sourcing it and it's making it easily and readily available and reproducible for the, well, just the general public and the scientific community to take hold of it and work with it. And this is awesome stuff, my friend. Yeah. And just to sort of explain what that thing, how it works or what, you know, what it's doing just to make it more useful, if people were curious about this device, they wanted to look up the Kedium Physics Levity device. 
then the way this thing works is as follows. The top has the ionizer grid. It releases ions. They travel towards the bottom. Now, unlike the original device, there's no ionizer on the bottom. Instead, I'm actually using the brass surface of the seven piezoelectric discs to collect the ions as a collector plate. And they're sharing a common ground with a high voltage source. So ions flow from the top to bottom on the inside in a straight line, except for they don't exactly flow in a straight line. The reason for that is synchronized with the piezoelectric sound transducers is an electromagnetic coil. So what the transducers do is they make the ions move up and down. They make them move along the vertical plane and just simply vibrate back and forth as they're flowing from the top to bottom. But the electromagnet forces them to move in a circular path, producing cyclotron radiation. Cyclotron radiation is basically the same thing as synchrotron radiation. What it means is that you have an electron moving in a circular path, and off the edges there is an amplified geometric electric field that is an increase in the scalar potential along one axis and a decrease of that same scalar potential along the other axes, along the linear direction. So when you have an exchange between these two fields, you also end up with a gravitational force that's simultaneously generated. And that's where we're getting that gravitational wave from because you have this electric field superimposed over a magnetic flux and they're at 90 degrees to each other. So they can't technically stop each other, but they're both along the same vector axis. So they saturate epsilon and mu of the local space-time refractive index. And you could just say this puts a stress on the aether in simpler, older terms. That, but that actually makes and, a lot of sense the aether or you can also compress it and uh, you know, squeeze the aether but there are two ways to think about this and so this device basically it stretches it along one axis and so it it displaces that's the third term displaces the aether so it moves it like a fan would move air if you will and that produces the gravitational force it moves it upwards hmm. fascinating stuff I like seriously it. <laughs> It's uh, the parallel, or sorry, yeah, the the direction is parallel. Their position is perpendicular, ninety degrees, and the two waves going together, and that effect. Correct. That that's the key aspect. Well, exactly. The electric field is along the direction that the force is generated and the magnetic field is perpendicular, but the magnetic field's electric vector potential is parallel. God, it literally kills my soul a little bit to say this right now, but here's a <laughs> sink and it's David Wilcox actually was talking about. I was watching I was watching Stephen Cambian's uh like uh, debug of it, but there was this one aspect that I had to disagree with Stephen and that somehow uh, Wilcox had gotten the right, correct information and it has to do with the, his some laser that he supposedly has but has never shared, but it's this technology of the 90 degree dual wave interaction uh, having this effect, specific effect. And uh, yeah, won't get further into that, but just. Bro, I swear if I find out Wilcox is playing with the beam splitter and that's what you're talking about and all this hype is for nothing, I'm, uh, you know, metaphorically gonna, gonna slap you in the well, head. I, I watched the, the replay on uh, True Seekers channel, right? It's like similar of experience of, you know, watching Archaics through Tartarian Truth channel. You know, you get the. <laughs> the comedic relief and debug through through the rest of it right like it's pretty but yeah gotta have an open mind and in that one it's like where whether or not wilcox is actually doing anything with that technology or just simply uh you know copied it from some other source that's actually doing the research and work and the original uh discovery or whatnot uh, I believe he was referring to it as what was used to supposedly be able to change a frog egg into like a salamander or something. It, it's that that I don't necessarily believe, but just the specific. Is this is fa phantom DNA <laughs> technique. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's a lot of stuff that I'll at least listen to, but. 
things like that i just don't buy right, exactly <laughs> like I, I, I i'll listen to any story it show us the evidence, right? Reproduce it. Don't just freaking talk about it and make the claim repeatedly. Actually do the freaking science and the experiment. He claims to have the laser, but has not, never brought it out. Like, okay, like, yeah, right. All right well, this, but, is, this is like the conundrum of a stable element 115 isotope. And that, that whole entire thing, like, is Bob Lazar completely full of BS? Is there a stable 115 isotope? Could it be possible? Well, technically, yeah. I mean, there are, there are theoretical models that show there are some potential stable isotopes, but we don't know how to make them. And it could he's, be he's, potentially but, what they're experimenting in such facilities as CERN or the talk, tokamaks and stuff like that, that would have large enough electromagnetic fields to contain something along that lines potentially no well i have sort of this theoretical model based on bob greener's work and ken shoulders and a variety of others which give me a, a conceptual fantasy that we can have a how, how would i say this um almost like a programmed holographic lattice in which we could assemble precisely the materials molecularly that we wanted in the right atomic ratios with the right isotopes. And we would be able to basically rip the electrons off the valence shells and expose the nuclei so that we could pluck out uh, neutrons or protons to our heart's desire. And we would be able to fabricate these isotopes in whatever ratio we wanted by using some you kind of... You are specifically talking about what my end goal of my electrolysis, alchemy, uh, experimentation, and development is, and what I believe uh, can be done with these monoatomics, the bagel coils, the Keshe coils, and uh, electrolysis in general. Right, so here's basically the concept. We have some machine that can take atoms apart, but the problem... So, so here's, here's the missing part, and the key aspect is the resident frequency of each metal and element that you're trying to transmute to, and that you have that pumping through both the anode and the cathode going into the electrolysis, which will then uh, structure the water specifically into that crystal lattice that you are speaking of and then the atomic hydrogen from the electrolysis uh, reaction from the water bonds into uh, the metal air. The, uh, if you have an arc plasma, the ball lightning aspect of it, and then creates that transmutation of elements and matter. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, that's one way, that's one way to do it. <laughs> there are, like I said, there are a, a multitude of, different approaches uh you're talking about liquid method and i understand that almost everything that you're doing right now is a liquid based approach to transmutation but, but stepping also, it up a notch will have the uh a high voltage plasma like uh electrical plasma arc going between the anode cathode the two electrodes and then you have that ball lightning plasma fusion EVO aspect, but instead of it being in air, you have it in a much denser, but still just hydrogen oxygen makeup material to be doing that transmutation of elements in. Right. I just I just want to make sure that you're aware of the other methods, which include um, atmospheric plasma transmutation and uh, vacuum transmutation, which you can do using the same high voltage fields, but it's not anywhere near as um, it's not anywhere near as bright, but you end up getting a lot of plasma inside the chamber. And then you have other methods as well that you can use the electric fields to polarize some of the elements. So like, a, like oh, yeah, a, or a different absolutely. Approach. Be aware of them because I don't want people to think like it's only a hundred percent. Walter Russell being the one with the uh, plasma tube aspect discovery of it. Right. Right. Even, even apparently the, Geet system is some kind of a plasma reaction. Yeah. Shout out Geet. Hans mentioned it at the start of the stream. <laughs> oh, no surprise there. It's it's hard to go into the free energy stuff without mentioning Geet because you know he's one more of those long history of cases where 
he died and now all this work is left behind right and he goes along with stan myers and all these other folks that you know you start to talk about them and all of a sudden things go wrong with the stream but probably not going to happen today at this point in the stream you just don't have enough viewers today but we've seen you yeah. start to talk about hho and hydrogen technology and everything goes awry and that's exactly what i am producing in front of us uh the well the first one not so much of it more uh just monoatomic silver where i have two uh, uh uh, just pure silver coins as the anode and cathode and you can see the white layer about an inch or two uh from the top going down of the pure silver uh, monatomics there and then now i'm gonna go light up uh the jar on the left which is expedite it's completely full of uh monoatomic aluminum or mist at this point just because the reaction's so high but uh hopefully i'll be able to show uh, the amount of hydrogen being produced still off of just the five volts of the copper coil here momentarily. Mm -hmm. Now keep on going with the experiments. You've made some unique materials. The one thing that you haven't really done that I'd like to see you do more of, Bernie, is mess around with what those materials might be able to do. So yep. you created, like, ultimately the goal of burning these experiments in water is you're going to end up with these solid powder materials or some kind of, you know, condensate. And you've got to figure out how is this useful in our laboratory experiments? You know, what can we do with this condensate? What can we do with these weird elements that have strange colors and unusual properties? So it's up to you. You have the materials, so either ship them out to people who can use them or... Or to the experiments yourself. Uh, yeah, next job here is starting to make care packages for everyone and start shipping them out. As well as starting to capture the hydrogen and actually use it itself. And possibly uh, putting, connecting, finally hooking up a couple of my spare microwaves far away from my house. Uh, but running some of these materials in that and seeing the transmutation that supposedly happens in microwaves with this material. And that, uh, that would be epic uh, potential results if the claims of others are able to be repeated. Yeah, what I uh, want to do is actually modify a couple of magnetrons. I've got a box with a great number of them in there. And so I want to have a hand choice pick at the best ones. So I want to augment the ceramic magnets that are on the magnetrons and replace them with uh, smaller, higher density magnets and then have a uh, set of coils on both sides around those magnets to control and vary the field, which will allow me to basically frequency modulate just like an FM radio station, the output frequency of the magnetron. Nice. All right. Well, um, any last words, my friends, as we're getting real close to the two hour mark and uh, I have to keep it under two hours for this special AI shorts feature to work at, and it's pretty epic. So I uh, want to try it out again, but uh, I'm, yeah. you guys Thanks. can finish it up. Thanks for joining. Thanks for showing us. Yeah, thanks for joining. That's super amazing. Stuff. Very interesting to stuff. That. Much love, Hans. Uh, any last words, my friend? I'm not off top of head, unless you guys want to come to Shasta, July 18th to the 21st. Oh, there is one more thing I wanted to ask you, Hans, again. Yeah, I'll bring this up. You had mentioned on a live stream once that you'd seen a apparatus at, I think it was uh, a Keshi conference or a convention or something. Oh, like it was that. Nassim. It was Nassim Haramain of the Residence Project. And oh so yeah, it was yeah. a. About, so it I was like an octagonal scaffolding that was made out of. Uh, it was like printed plastic, basically, three uh, right, D so printed, and then it had like uh, one fifth inch uh, copper wire wrapped, like interwoven around it. So one going in one direction and one going in the other direction. Yeah. So it created well, like this 3D web. printer, right? So it's time for me to really think about this story that you reported on. 
and and he plugged it into a nine volt battery and the thing lifted up off the table and you know pete petered out pretty quickly but it was like interesting that it, it did this the question is is there so, any you might be able to connect me with whoever I have no done, idea this is this is, is 2013. A, i've seen a similar device uh you can find video of it online um it's that's something that t townsend brown had done as well very similar well i mean we all have done the lifters thing and that's pretty simple but what you're talking about there with the structural framework and this thick wire that's no lifter that sounds like it was a heavy device it had some you know some mass or some girth to it and right it just lifted itself up so this isn't like some balsa wood and ultra thin aluminum foil kind of thing flying on um, no, no, it was it was it was bulky. I mean, it was it's probably a little bit over a foot wide. See, that's there, a there were a couple of devices like this, but that was the one that caught my attention because yeah. when he plugged it in, I was just like, "What am I watching here? <laughs> How is that even working?" <laughs> yeah, I could easily three so. D print the sides of that thing or build it out of whatever framework or material that I wanted. I could even uh, just cut little planks or pieces of wood or whatever uh to do it but it the only thing is i can't find any information about this case and the only report that i've ever heard is straight close me <laughs> yeah so the um, question is can you connect me with somebody here so that we can try to move forward with the project and and actually like i i don't know whose device it was quite honestly i mean that was a, hmm. was a huge well, sounds, right so i'm sure you remember at least one person's name that was there uh maybe you can remember the name of the, the team here mine so we will have to get yeah, it was it was, at, it was at the residence project it was february of uh, 2013. All right, so maybe Andy Janover was doing his his spiel, and they had a bunch of people that had brought their devices basically to, to show off to the scene because he was going through some interesting patents of his own. Um, you can look up one of his patents. It's this like weird dome shaped device, uh, not dome, sorry, uh, globe shaped device that had I think sixteen fingers, and he would charge a positive and a negative through each one and was spinning water through the center of it and it was changing like the, the water it was warping the, the the floorboards in his house around this thing i think um, i've heard that story it's called a hydro band this is called um, all right well we will have to continue this yeah no conversation worries. after the stream ends uh, as I got to cut it off here, but uh, yeah, stick around, Hans. Yeah, I'll, I'll stick around after we'll the end, to... Hans, and we can talk in the after show. But right now, he's got to just kind of finish this thing out. Yeah, I just got to cut nine. Cut it so it stays yep. at a few hours. Thank you all. Much love. Wishing everyone a blessed week, and we'll see you again soon. Cheers. You crazy mother. Yeah. It's just